Hi everyone! I'm so excited to be sharing today's video with you. Several weeks ago, a Korean company reached out to me to see if I'd like to review their product. So a big thank you to them for sending over this set of 24 by Magello Mission Gold watercolors for me to try. Linked in the description box below. Please note, I have not been paid to make this review, so everything I say will be my own honest thoughts and opinions. And one more thing before we begin, let me quickly show you that they also have a set of 12 and a set of 48 available. So if you're more interested in those variations, just keep them in mind as I go through the review. So the one I have here is the 24 color set. It came in this simple cardboard box in the same design that we've all seen of Magello Mission Gold watercolor branding. It says on the front, triple pans, watercolor, watercolor art sets. I wonder what that triple means. Anywho, I actually opened this as soon as I got it, so here is what it looked like when I first opened it. Wrapped in plastic shrink wrap. I'm guessing that's for preventing scratches. And there's also this pamphlet. The inside basically talks about the differences in extruded paint and poured paint, and that for this watercolor set, the paints had been poured. On the back side, Tip number one says you can easily rearrange the colors. Tip number two says you can lift the tray out by lifting the protruding parts in between the pans. Tip number three tells us that the paints react to the environment's humidity. Therefore, the paints will be softer during the summer and that we should make sure to get rid of excess moisture before storage. And here I am just admiring the gold lettering against the dark blue of the palette. Personally, I think it looks quite classy. The clasp is secure, but also easy to open. Once open, I swung out the mixing tray and found this cute little swatch chart, complete with pigment info, light fast info, the works. I was pleasantly surprised when I noticed the swatch chart was made with Baohong's Academy 100% cotton paper. 300 GSM as well, so it's thick and definitely won't easily bend on you. And then there was also this sheet protecting the paints. Once removed, we can see that none of them were wrapped individually. I absolutely love this because I think too much wrapper is a waste. And also, frankly speaking, unwrapping can sometimes be so tedious. I'm sure some of you could relate. Back to the palette. Don't you just love the swing out tray that can fully rotate 360 degrees? You can also easily just yank it out to remove and place it on the other side if that's more convenient for you. I have a rather small working desk space, so I'd rather not have this on. I'm going to choose to leave it removed. As for this black tray that houses the half pans, okay, I'll be honest, if the colors were the right side up, I wouldn't even bother to care about this black tray at all, but I feel like maybe they did that on purpose for us to discover this feature. I tinkered with this already, so I'll just summarize it for you. First of all, you cannot just remove it and turn it right side up. This bottom edge here is flat and flush. However, this top part here closest to the hinge, there's a recessed part here in the middle. So if you turn this tray, it will fit, but the palette won't close properly. So if you want the colors in the proper order that you want them in, you can just open up this black tray and rearrange the colors yourself. That's a very simple solution. This black tray is designed with a grid pattern on the base, so your pans won't move or jiggle about. However, this did get me thinking whether or not all pans fit. And apparently, no, not all pans fit. I tried My Mary Blue, Sennelier, Paul Rubens, and generic half pans. None of them fit. The only one that did, though, was a Van Gogh half pan. So what does that mean? Well, if you get this palette and use it up, make sure to keep the pans. And then, this is one of my favorite features of the palette, this top lid part is deep, so I don't need to worry much about spillage. As mentioned earlier, the swatch chart is made from Baohong paper. Can't beat that! This is probably the best swatch chart I've been given with a set. 
This is rather small, so I decided to print the chart on meat and paper and swatch the paints all out again for you. Hopefully this way it's much more clear what colors are included in the 24 set. I won't go over each individual color as you can see that to yourself, but I would like to point out that there's 19 out of 24 colors that are single pigment. There's also a good selection of primary colors, secondary colors, and earth colors. If you're a beginner, you can also practice learning color theory by using these 12 colors I selected from this set. I'll leave a link below to Otto's color theory playlist if you haven't seen it already. Moving on to actually painting using the palette, most of you already know I love Magello watercolors. I even did a video on it. So hopefully it doesn't come as a surprise when I say that I loved painting with this palette. The colors are exactly the same as they are from tubes. Are they the 24 colors I would have personally picked for my Magello exclusive palette? Probably not, but it's definitely a good generic selection of colors. I don't particularly like to mix colors on my palette. I mainly like to dip and drop. But I did end up test mixing, and to my surprise, water does not bead on this plastic mixing space. It actually pools. Amazing! I don't know if they pre-treated the plastic or not, but it was a pleasant, unexpected discovery. Another thing I was somewhat worried about prior to painting was that I was afraid the bristles of my brush would get stuck between the black grid tray and the half pans, but after testing the palette for several paint sessions, I did not experience any snagging or trapped bristles at all. Definitely glad that there's no issue with that. Overall, I'm really happy with this new unique palette design Magello has come out with. It's definitely something different, and I'm really glad there isn't any issue with any of the functionality of the palette. Oh, I forgot to mention that Magello watercolors do not contain honey. Yes, I know some of them are tacky, but I emailed Magello directly and they told me they don't use honey. That said, I live in Thailand where the conditions are hot and humid all year round, but despite the paints being tacky, I've never had issues with mold growing. And one last thing, I noticed that if you removed this swing tray, you can store several travel brushes inside. They do rattle around, so it's not something I would personally do, but I thought I'd mention that if anyone was thinking about it. Alright, that's all I have for you today. I do hope you enjoyed my thorough palette review. I know I didn't talk much about the paints themselves, since there are already lots and lots of reviews out there. I've also talked plenty about my love for Magello, so I decided to focus on the actual palette design itself. I hope this was useful to anyone who might have come across this product or those considering buying. As always, thank you so much for watching everyone. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.